Hey guys, this is Aditya and welcome to Capital Mind. So a small disclosure before we start the video. This video should not be construed as an investment advice and clients of Capital Mind may maintain positions in the securities that we might discuss in today's video. So we are doing a lot of interesting stuff at Capital Mind. Uh, we recently started a Capital Mind Bond Baba video series and um, in the first episode of this series, we did the basics of bond market, introduction to bonds and today we'll be doing the second video which is basically types of bonds and the uh, risks associated with them. We are doing a lot of stuff at Capital Mind. At Capital Mind Premium, we offer free and premium articles, portfolio strategies and we also have a very vibrant community of traders and investors on our Slack channel. At Capital Mind Wealth, we offer PMS services and goal-based financial planning. And most importantly, we do Capital Mind Podcast where we talk, talk about lots of interesting stuffs. So make sure you follow us on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Lots of content. We have lots and lots of content to offer. So let's start today's video. So as I said, I'll be talking about types of bonds and the risks asso associated with them. So I want to start with government securities. So government securities are the most safest uh, securities available in the market because it's issued by the government and the government can never default. In worst case scenario, the government can print money and give your money back to you. And since the risk is uh, the lowest, the reward is also the lowest, the coupon rate is lowest when it comes to government securities. And uh, there is one fact which I want you to know. Uh, when we talk about government securities, if the maturity period is less than one year, we call it a T-bill, treasury bill. But if the maturity period is more than one year, we call it a, a government bond. So majority in case of government bonds may be anything from one to 30 years. And uh, when it comes to bonds in general, uh, there is one more thing which uh, I want you to know. When the maturity period is longer, the interest rate is also higher. Can you tell me why? Why is it so? Longer the maturity period, higher the interest rate. It's simple because when we when we talk about longer periods like 10 years, 15 years, the probability of interest rate fluctuation is also higher, right? I mean, the rates may go up, down, and you know, the probability is just very high. Because of that, when we talk about maturity period, higher the maturity period, higher the interest rate, coupon rate, because of uh, fluctuation risk. So let me show you an example. So I took this uh, photo from, I took this screenshot from the uh, RBI website. So this is how the RBI announces the uh, issue of government securities. So you can see 6.8%, uh, this is the coupon rate. And this, this government security will uh, mature at 2024. So if you can see higher the maturity period, this one will mature at 2049. See, the coupon rate is also higher, 7.72. Now, you should think of this as an IPO. Like what happens when, when there is an IPO? Uh, um, whenever the, a new company gets listed, for example, Ujjivan, uh, if you have been following news lately, Ujjivan is about to get listed. So, uh, what happens when you subscribe to the IPO? You get the, secure, you get the stock at some uh, price, say X, X or say 100 rupees. But then that is the primary market, right? The listing happens in the primary market. And if you are lucky enough, you get the security at the uh, at the issue price, that is 100 rupees. But then once the uh, security is listed, then they get traded in this secondary market, right? Where the price may vary. So when, when you go to RBI website and check the press release, the rates that you see, those rates you should think as the primary rates, but the those securities may be rate uh, may be trading at some at a different rate in the secondary market. So let us see secondary market rates for some uh, government securities. So if you go to this cciindia.com, you can see the uh, government securities trading at multiple uh, rates. So LTY is the last traded yield. So you can see this one will mature at 2029, and it's. Uh, Last traded yield LTY is 6.64% and this one will mature at 2026 and this one is 2033. Again, higher the maturity, longer the maturity period, higher is the coupon rate. So the next question is how can I buy a government security? Like how if I'm interested in buying, how can I do it? It's very simple. You can buy it from 
uh, brokers like Zerodha. But one thing which you should know is that the liquidity in secondary markets is very low. Suppose you buy a government security security today, uh, you can't expect to sell it tomorrow or maybe uh, in a week or a month because the uh, liquidity is very low. So if you, if you are a person who is interested in buying government bonds, this is more of a buy and hold kind of investment, okay? Because the uh, liquidity in the secondary market is very low. But there is an, there is another way of taking exposure into government securities, and that is through the mutual fund route. So there is something called as uh, GSEC funds or guild funds managed by AMCs, right? Uh, asset management companies. So guild funds offer you a portfolio of government bonds and the most important advantage of uh, taking the mutual fund route is the liquidity, right? You get more liquidity and uh, uh, since mutual funds are bound to publish uh, the everyday NEV, you can also monitor the value of your bonds on a regular basis, which is not a good habit, but yeah, you get that, uh, you get that advantage when you invest through the mutual fund route. Now it also offers you the option of buying a collection of GSEX with various maturities. So these are the benefits of buying government bonds through uh, AMCs. Now uh, the final question is who should go for uh, government securities? As I discussed in the previous slide, people who are looking for an investment horizon of 10 or more years should go for government securities and they offer you better than FD returns and they are uh, very safe, right? The safest form of bonds that are available and it's also a low cost option even if you go for direct buying zero the charge is just six rupees for every ten thousand rupees invested so it's also a low cost option so that was about that was all about the government securities the next type of bond that i want to discuss is the tax-free bonds so tax-free bonds as the name suggests the interest that you receive on these bonds are tax-free and they're issued by government-backed authorities but again, the uh, liquidity is a problem here. Liquidity in the secondary market is pretty low. But the most important concept that I wanted to discuss under uh, tax-free bonds is something call, we call as tax loss har harvesting. So basically booking a loss without incurring a loss and taking a tax advantage out of it. So let us see. So it's called in case of tax-free bonds, it is called as interest stripping. So how is it done? Let's first understand the idea. So suppose you have incurred some capital gains, but you don't want to pay tax on this. You want to save your tax. How can you do it? So one idea is you want to show the tax department a loss, but you don't want to actually lose the money. And you take the advantage of tax-free bonds to do this. So how is it done? See, there is, there is a uh, tax-free bonds have a particular trade. Uh, they tend to fall on the interest payment date. So for example, look at this NHAI issued bond. So see, it's cruising, right? It's going up, it's going up, it's going up. This was the interest payment date and you know, it fell. So see again, it went up and then it fell. So if you can see it, it tends to fall at September, end of September, because that is the interest payment date. So it falls and then see again, here it falls. So the idea here is to take advantage of this and uh, saving tax out of this. So I, I'll give you a detailed example. And please remember, we, we are not losing any money here. We are just booking a loss rather than incurring a loss. We are not incurring any loss. So suppose you, you purchased a bond for 100 rupees. You paid 100 rupees, right? But on the date of interest payment, the bond price will fall as I showed you. So tax-free bonds tend to fall on the interest payment date. So suppose it fell to 92. So you incurred 8 rupees loss, right? You show that loss to the, uh, you show that capital loss to the income tax department. But at the same time, you received an 8 rupees as interest, right? And since this is a tax-free bond, the interest that you receive is tax-free, right? So you show 8 rupees as a loss, but the 8 rupees, that you, you receive 8 rupees uh, as interest, but that is not taxable, right? So that is, this is called as interest rate stripping. The idea here is, as you can see, the loss on the bond can be used to offset a gain on something else. And you don't lose money in this, other than the brokerage costs and all that. So I believe this was a very interesting concept. 
uh, this is the most important thing I want to discuss under tax free bonds. So the next bond that I want to discuss is 54 EC bonds. So these type of bonds 54 EC bonds are just meant to save uh, capital gains tax arising out of sale of property. So if you haven't incurred any long term capital gains from the sale of property then this bond is not for you. But let us understand how this works. So suppose you bought a property for 1 crore and say after 5 years you sold it for 1.5 crore. So you earned 50 lakhs on that. So that is called as long term capital gains. And in India if you incur a long term capital gains from sale of property you have to pay 20% as tax on that 50 lakhs. Now what happens if you in, if you take 20 lakhs out of that 50 lakhs and invest in a 54 EC bond then you don't have to pay long term capital gains tax on that 20 lakhs you get a deduction of that 20 lakh. So basically whatever amount you invest in a 54 EC bond you get a deduction for that amount from your long term capital gains. But there are a lot of caveats here first there is a lock in period of 5 years your money whatever you invest in a 54 EC bond your money gets locked in for 5 years and at the same time the maximum investment limit towards an EC bond for 1 year is 50 lakhs you cannot invest more than 50 lakhs in 1 year in an uh, in 54 EC bonds and you have to invest in 54 EC bonds within 6 months from the sale of property and most importantly you should not forget the interest that you receive from 54 EC bonds are not tax free you have to pay tax on that. So uh, that was 54 EC bonds for you. So we discussed three bonds today and I want to discuss uh, other bonds as well. I want to discuss convertible bonds, bonds with options, floating rate bonds, junk bonds but I don't want to discuss it today because the session will become very long and uh, I want to keep it short. So let us discuss that in episode 3. So we are doing a lot of work at Capital Mind. We are doing a lot of stuff. So we are trying new formats and we are trying new uh, topics, concepts. So please let us know your thoughts. How are we doing? Please let us know your uh, thoughts in the comment section. Please subscribe to us or please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on Twitter and let us know if you want us to do something else. We will definitely give it a thought. So thanks a lot for joining us. It's a pleasure and see you next time.